Okay. This is Night of the Living Dead. Probably the only one in the Living Dead series that I didn't fall asleep in. At least twice. Okay, you should give some context for that. You were very sleepy when you watched the other movies. Well, and distracted. Yeah, I should... Well, I I mean, you know, new episode of Dragon Ball Super came out. And I was like, I was like, damn, I gotta see how... Well, it was the last episode. I was like, damn, I gotta... Because it sounds like... It sounds like you're insulting those other movies. I mean, Today, some... Then we're gonna have a problem. No, some of those movies do deserve to be insulted. Okay, yes. But the, as far as the original three go. Anyway, uh, so this is George Romero's first theatrical picture, 1968. One of the last movies ever released uh, not to have a rating, because this was before the, uh, the MPA rating board, uh, which released less which began less than a month later after this film was made so nobody knew that this movie was going to be horribly shocking uh because it was just back then all movies were just movies this would have been the equivalent of an r at that time but they didn't have a rating system so little kids went to the theaters and saw this movie it was a big kerfuffle which Uh, is great back in the good old days when movies were movies you know (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Back when movies were movies instead of, uh... CGI shit fest. Instead of businesses. They're businesses now. Movies movies are business. Yes. They're businesses that last for one year and then most people get laid off. Directed by George A. Romero. Romer- Romero. 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 And I'm, a. Uh... I I don't know I I've actually not heard your opinion. I'm a huge fan of Romero as a director and a person, especially as a person. My first introduction to George Romero is when I shot him in the face in Call of the Dead, and he kept running at me. So he's okay in my book. Yeah. Anybody who can take a bullet like Romero in that game. And plus, I saw his um. I figure we're either gonna have to I got the Blu-ray for uh, Survival of the Dead, and when you hit the play option, it's like, would you like to hear an introductory from George Romero? I said, heck yeah. He seemed like a pretty cool guy. And I remembered he had the little ponytail. I don't even remember what the man looks like. Johnny, it takes you five minutes. Johnny. Five minutes to put the wreath on the grave and six hours to drive back and forth. <laughs> poor old, poor, poor Johnny. Just, uh, just hates his dead dad. Or is it, or is it his mother? No, it's his dad. It's his mother and... I think it's his dad? I think it's... It's, it's yeah, they, it's his mother and Night of the Living Dead. Th- some fucking... I don't know. I do not know. I should mention now, instead of waiting until later, that this movie is in the public domain for the stupidest of reasons. Um, as I mentioned, this came out in 1968, and that was before a law in 1976 that changed how copyright works on movies. Before then, you had to have a disclaimer in the title card. Otherwise, it's fair game. Basically, I'm simplifying it a bit. But this movie, the working title for this was Night of the Flesh Eaters, and that's how it was originally cut. Uh, they changed the name to Night of the Living Dead, which is a better name. But when the production company changed the name, they didn't put the disclaimer on the new title card. And that means it immediately entered the public domain. And George Romero allegedly didn't get a penny from this, even though it made $30 million in 1960s, which is a lot. So that's a little sad. Just a, just a little sad backstory on this movie of things start to pick up. And allegedly... The money from this movie went to the production company that fucked it up in the first place. Hmm. So that's fun. Spend good money on these things and come out here in the America. Last year's America. The flowers die and the land of the free and the home of. Probably should have thought that through a little more. Yep. Sell it next year. Wonder how many times we bought the same one. If this movie was made nowadays, do you think that Johnny would? Probably go on some rants about how he and father never got along. Oh, the, would you think we'd get that epic backstory, that epic Johnny backstory we've all been waiting for? Yeah, he'd show that. Hey, oh, come on, Barb. Oh, I don't fucking know. <laughs> Just something. You can't. It's hard to make up shit because it's it's like I'm watching movies and I'm like, how the f- like who came up with this? 
he'd, he'd explain it's it. It's not hard at all to make up shit. Johnny oh. and his father used to play baseball all the time, but then Daddy got a new work, new job working at the firm, and they became distant. And that was the day that his father died to him, even though his father actually died three, three uh, years later. And his father would always wear those gloves when he struck him, so whenever he puts those on, that's how he deals with the pain that's that his father left him. We yep. It was from right over there. Right over there where he beat my ass. Wait. I think I think I think we might not be too far from what really I think happened. we might not be too far off. Johnny. <laughs> Maybe it could be like deleted scene? Stop it now, I mean it. Romero was really ahead of his time with domestic abuse. They're coming to get you, Barbara. Stop it. You're ignorant. They're coming for you, Barbara. I do. Stop I. It. I just find She's it. It's too proper to say you're a dick. <laughs> you're ignorant. There comes one of you're now. ignorant. I say. Here he comes now. I'm getting out of here. Johnny. I just find that it. That wasn't him faking. That was like the actor actually trying to. Oh, that was improv. Yeah, it was actually. This was improv too. They didn't know he was gonna crash. <laughs> This guy just walked on set and just grabbed him and started grabbing people. They didn't tell him it was a movie. Just some homeless man that showed up. They didn't have any security. All they had was Johnny, so this is real. Yeah, Bill Heisman just, Heisman just, just fucking wandered on set drunk. He's the only, you know, Bill Heisman's in the, uh, he's the only returning cast member. The, uh, the new footage they shot for the uh, the 30-year anniversary, which I'll talk about later. I don't want to talk about that bullshit right now. Okay. I <laughs> but, think uh, coming up m soon is like the only little fact I know about this movie. But it, I'll wait till it comes up, and I'll be sure to interrupt you during your most important detail. Oh, that's fine. I don't think anybody really cares about the... Uh... <laughs> about the, uh, the, the 30th year anniversary uh, cut of this movie that no one knows about. I mean, it's porn to somebody, Spen. I've you... masturbated to every one of Romero's films. Martin, multiple times. Martin's great jack-off material. <laughs> Maybe this side of the car will be different. <laughs> This 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 is one of the faster zombies in his movies. Yeah, faster thinking too. Yeah, I started noticing that about that how his zombies are just really different from other zombies, and, and how they change in each movie a little bit. I'm like I'm like okay they could do this they could do okay I think this is it coming up. How they only shot on the right side of the car during this scene because during driving to the set they hit a fucking tree and the left side, whenever they fucked it up on uh, camera. The car was already fucked up because they accidentally ran it into something. That's, so they're only showing the right side of the car right now, for that reason. I actually didn't know that little bit. That's fucking funny. Yeah. <laughs> so, am I... See, look, the car was already fucked up. <laughs> she didn't even hit the tree. Should we get a new car? No, it's fine. Well, well, I know how to fix this. <laughs> Just the do, you think it was, I, do you think it was Tom Savini driving the car? Do no. you know who was driving it? <laughs> Probably Bill Heisman was drunk. <laughs> this guy crashed our car and then he went drunk into our set and attacked our actress. <laughs> and we filmed it perfectly. <laughs> oh yeah, him smashing that window was really just him trying to get it. Hurts like it's like you think I care about the state of this car? This scene has perfect blocking in it. None of it was planned out. <laughs> so what do you think? Where do you think this zombie came from? I think it came out of like a morgue or some shit. Because he's got well, that torn suit. He certainly didn't come from a grave. Cause you wouldn't, you'd never be able to dig your way out of there. Let alone get past the coffin. Ever read the zombie survival guide like every other middle schooler did at the time? Yes, I did. And I thought that was early high school. I can't quite remember. Well, what I, I didn't. Remember. I didn't get it until like me, the high school. But. I saw it in middle school and my sister would never let me read it. I was like, I'm so fucking ready 
for the zombie apocalypse when that happens and then people said actually no you're going to what's going to happen to you is you're going to become an adult i have to get a job and i'm like fuck what book do i read for that <laughs> but uh, i'm still ready for it when it when it uh when it uh, eventually happens and it will yeah and that's how spencer read mein kampf <laughs> Read this, kid. It has all the answers. It has all the answers. <laughs> so, this house that the vast majority of the film is uh, shot in was condemned to be destroyed by the owners already, so they just they just let this young 20-something filmmaker do whatever the fuck he wanted in it. Yeah. Which sucks so it's because... not around, unfortunately. You can't look at it. Yep. It was long destroyed. Mm-hmm. We need to do that. We just need to find something. We need to destroy a house? We need- I don't even care if we film, I just want to destroy a house. Uh, uh, Can we just well, make a movie where we write the plot around us destroying well, the house? <laughs> you mean like, uh, like, demolition? I mean like, first we film us, like, destroying the house, but then later we go back and shoot, like, a plot to kind of fit with it. Wait, we'll destroy the house first and then shoot? We're gonna film us destroying the house, but then we gotta come up with a plot to make sense with us destroying that house. So I don't know if you noticed, but the eyes on that gooey corpse you just saw were uh, ping pong balls. That George Romero made him, he, he made that himself. And all of the blood in this movie is chocolate syrup. <laughs> not, not, not what people typically use for blood, but since it's black and white, you can get away with that. I think the fact that this is black and white kind of kept me more interested. I don't know why. It adds a moody atmosphere, I guess. Black and white, yeah, black and white still serves a, serves a purpose in a lot of movies. Obviously, you know, some movies uh, from this era, or from before this era, actually, black and white, uh, color was possible. I find it easier on the eyes. Some, I guess Some of them are better colorized, but, uh, like, uh, another good example is... Uh, the Mist, I don't know if you know about this, but he, the studio wanted that to be in color because it was obviously the early 2000s and fucking weird for a black and white movie to come out, but there's a black and white cut of that movie, much better, because the CG in that movie is so cheap, <laughs> the black yep. and white really covers it up. And it was meant to be in black and white, it was like a, an homage to corny monster movies. Uh, apparently at some screenings, they'll show Friday the 13th Part 6 in black and white. Act okay, that's the one with the ping pong balls, actually. I- I messed up, I- <laughs> These kind of look like candy corn. Candy corn. Oh yeah, so it's our main man. That is our main man. Who can uh, apparently teleport. Mr. Dwayne Jones, who was uh, not written to be a black character. So the most famous thing about this movie is that the first horror film to have a black protagonist, but George Romero has said multiple times that Dwayne Jones was just the best actor he could find. Don't worry about him. There was no yeah. race in mind for this character. I'd do a black joke, but it spoils the plot. Oh, fuck you. <laughs> Don't worry, Dwayne Jones, there is a key to my heart, and you've stolen it. Oh my god. Alright. I'd fuck Dwayne Jones, but he's dead now. What's stopping you? <laughs> oh, that's right. Actually, that means it's easy. <laughs> Night of the Living Dead reunion. <laughs> I'm going to a Pittsburgh cemetery. I'll see you in 10 hours. <laughs> hey. While well, we're at it, we can bug him in the shopping mall. It'll be Night of the Living Dead, if you know what I'm saying. Night of the Freaky <laughs> Dead. <laughs> That's the same shot from earlier. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it, every time I go down the, the stairs, the camera's slightly out of focus. It's like... <laughs> Don't go up there, the yeah, same shot will happen again. I don't think it's gonna change. <laughs> <laughs> hey, 
They could only have this corpse for five minutes. Uh, they could only afford him, him for that long, then he had to leave. It's like when they get Robert Zadar for one of these movies, and he's, they, sh they just get his head shot. Robert Zadar, that's another corpse I need to start fucking. Just make a book. Ben, Ben, the walls are de bleeding delicious chocolate syrup. <laughs> I think another reason why I like this movie the most, I guess I was just like the thought of holding out in like a house out in the middle of nowhere. So you, you, you're saying you prefer a house over a mall or a salt mine? Yeah, the salt mine, it's, I don't like the thought of being underground. I would go fucking crazy just like all the characters in that movie. Oh yeah, big time. And I like the shopping mall idea. I thought that was really cool. The fuck did the light do to you? Yeah, but those have a much higher density for two of them. for uh, you know biker raids. I don't think anybody's gonna raid a little farmhouse. I fell asleep watching that when I woke up and I saw them doing like donuts around the uh, the fountain. I was like, what the fuck is this? Now we should clarify: you didn't fall asleep because you were bored. No, I fell asleep because uh well, I'm just yeah. <laughs> My brain knew important stuff was happening. Oh, that cut there. That, <laughs> <laughs> that cut, it, it was perfectly seamless. Just like how when that actor... The camera went out of focus. <laughs> hey, what the fuck are you doing, man? He's not even as... We're just really stupid. <laughs> He's not even hitting him. <laughs> oh, yeah. I think... Another funny th a thing that I find funny about this movie is just that I like to imagine that George Romero said, just show up in your best zombie costume, and then like five people just showed up butt-ass naked. <laughs> <laughs> what? It's like... Hey, it's Joseph Gordon-Levitt. <laughs> so I think we haven't really mentioned, obviously this is... Uh, pretty much a given, but this is the film that invented zombies, essentially. What well, we it, re it zombies. redefined the modern zombie. It, well, it, it, I'd say it invented what zombies are now. It's nothing like... Uh, like old like zombies a, were like voodoo and shit. Like, before this, the most notable zombie film was, of course, White Zombie, which, even that, not really talked about today, so... This is, uh... It's kind of impressive that this... A uh, twenty-something guy from Pittsburgh created a, something that's just this massive pop culture uh, icon now. And this brand new movie monster, the the most recent movie monster, probably the only new one for a very long time. I don't I don't think Hollywood's interested in new ideas right now. Uh, I don't know. Speaking of, not many people talk about White Zombie today. I'm pretty sure we're the only people to talk about White Zombie today. <laughs> Being literal there. Why is it always... It, there's, a, there's a significant chance I'm the only person who has mentioned White Zombie today. And I'm probably the second, but I only brought it up because you mentioned it. No so it no. needed, like, an action at that and forth to cause a reaction. Are we bringing Newton's laws of physics discussion of white zombie? For every uh, mention of white zombie, there was an equal but opposite other mention. Of white zombie? Of white zombie? I think that maybe this was the, the equal and opposite reaction to white zombie. So maybe, I don't know. Several years later? Yeah, like, paused the react. I don't know when Z White Zombie came out, actually. I, I don't fucking know. It's got really far from my mic. I'm just I'm just too distracted by why do they choose to only tear one side of the clothes. Any guy wearing a suit, the, left, the right sleeve is torn. <laughs> well, I mean... Oh, fuck, I just spilled my booze on me. Um... I don't think zombies care. They really don't. I don't think they care about anything. They're real assholes. Yeah, they are. 
It's the most horrifying thing in the world. If you get bitten by one of the dick. <laughs> get some more lights on in this house. The Go exact... ahead. Yeah, the exact... There's a lot of electricity you haven't wasted. The, the exact <laughs> opposites. Like, okay. You need to be very secluded. Let's make this bitch bright. Let's light this bitch up. All right, we need to turn all of the lights on. We're not electricity. We're not visible. Do you know how to survive, woman? Like, damn it! While you're at it, make as much noise as possible. <laughs> She's looking at the knife, like you're my new bro. <laughs> Surely one of these is the key. <laughs> I think the real issue is that no one told her that the main lead was a black guy. <laughs> she's like, <laughs> she's like <laughs> do you do you have any do you have any uh, friends coming ones with less color? <laughs> Are you the understudy? Judy O'D is a classy lady. She was. She, but we have to try to board the house. Maybe maybe we should. We should we should. The windows and the door. Should probably just. Not talk we'll about right. what goes on in her mind. Because we don't know. She, she, she could. No, I, I meant classy in the good way, not the that she's an old racist. <laughs> oh, because I was like, like maybe she's thinking, wow, this his hair looks nicer. Oh my god, the Negro's touching me. <laughs> Jesus Christ! <laughs> hey, public domain bitches. It's that's not an excuse to be racist. <laughs> Just say oh, public domain bitches. I wonder who that person on the picture is. Probably someone <laughs> I should know. Do you think that's the do you think that's the person who in the house they're filming again? I think <laughs> that's it's like they forgot to take the picture. <laughs> so kinda like a partner's thing where they forgot to take the wedding but photos. But there's down? no copyright disclaimer on his picture, so they can use it. <laughs> Actually I think that was Teddy Roosevelt. <laughs> oh. I'll just kick the bottle. Oh. Jesus. Oh my god, it's the Harry Potter music. <laughs> the non damn wizards the, did this. The non-copyright Harry Potter music. <laughs> December 1966. Okay, if this is... Okay, bullshit. There's no way it's fucking December. I've been up in Pittsburgh and... Fuck no. It's cold. There's no way. They just found it. It's like, mm, maybe well, December. Well, those those weird northern snow people adapted to the cold. They like, they don't feel things anymore. It appears the zombies have stopped coming towards the house. Why did they lose interest? No, there's ten feet of snow that came down while we ten were. Ten feet of snow. Also, their hearts aren't breathing, are aren't beating, so they just froze. Yeah, <laughs> their their blood froze. Look, I, I found some wood, too. I'm helping, aren't I? <laughs> Am I'm, I helping? Am I helping? <laughs> so, um, Do we get equal pay yet? Oh, yeah, Barbara that's right. I still make more than you. Oh, like, actually, no, I, this is horrible. I'm I'm white and you're black. I, I'm a white woman and you're black. We're not getting anything. How long until the 60s end? Two more years? I'm confused. Wow. If you're the, if you're a black male and I'm a white woman, who's supposed to be the victim? Don't worry. Some white guys are going to show up later. Oh, yeah. So, we'll Barbara take... very famously goes catatonic. Infamously, not famously. Goes catatonic for the majority of this movie, which is heavily criticized. Romero said, uh, there's like, there's, since then, every one of Romero's zombie movies has one uh, strong female character, and he said that it's like an apology for this. But I mean, I'd go fucking catatonic, but that's because I'm a I'm a weak gay man. And you need a strong black man to guide you through these troubling times. You know times. what? Actually, I'd be super I'd be super strong if. Uh, Dwayne Jones was with me during the zombie apocalypse. To be honest, so I would, I, I would, I'd rather do a zombie apocalypse with a black guy. To be honest, I don't know why. Something about I call Is it, it because the, they'd get bitten first. No, I call it the spirit. <laughs> it's like, like I say, 
the most racist shit sometimes, but honestly, I'm like, I don't know. I'd rather have a black friend than a white friend. It's something about the spirit. I call it the spirit, and it can mean anything you want. I have no idea what the fuck you're talking about. That's because you just have to give your own meaning to the spirit. Rich Evans. Uh, uh, Rich Evans. I'm sorry. It's Evan, motherfucker. I meant to say Evan, and I said Rich Evans. Because I've been drinking. God, I was trying to go as long as possible without making any red letter media references. I did, and I made it on accident. Then again, I did bring up partners, and I do want to. Well, the joke I was gonna say is Evan speaks. Bring your own interpretation. I speak in for someone who's really stupid. I speak in a lot of metaphors. I don't know why I want one of them. So chairs. we're talking over a lot. Oh, sorry. Yeah, we're talking a lot of the the exposition in this film, but that's okay because this movie doesn't have a plot and it's perfect. That's why I enjoy it. Almost all of Romero's films, even his bad ones, are just movies that you just turn it on and you're not being bombarded with information. They're very visceral. Uh, they're they're systematic, but they're also but they're not like oppressively so. They're not fast paced. They're not. Uh, you're not being bombarded with information. So it's just like it's like the perfect hangout kind of movie. I'd say the the most the movie that feels the most like that is Martin and Dawn of the Dead. Also the Crazies, but people don't really talk about the Crazies anymore. I thought the Crazies were great. <laughs> Man, my favorite fucking. I'd say the thing I laughed at the most in all of the Romero movies was just that one cop from Dawn of the Dead that they made racist for absolutely no fucking reason. He's just standing on, <laughs> come out your ye little, I'm like, I'm like, Jesus Christ, where the fuck Oh my God, there's zombies. I could, no reason now. It's, it's like, I can't, it's like, yes, there's zombies. I can shoot minorities for no reason. And then I'm just thinking, and he has the mustache, that weird ass fucking haircut. And then he just drops that end bomb out of nowhere. And then I think him kicking in the door and blasting that dude's face off. I'm like, Jesus fucking Christ. What is this man? What is this man? Someone needs to make an edit to where that cop kicks in the door and blasts his head off. <laughs> Blast whose head off? Oh, the, Ben? Yeah, Ben. <laughs> Honestly? I'd say Dawn of the Dead had my favorite characters in it. Dawn has four... Dawn is a movie about four very strong characters. Peter, Roger, less... Steven, and Fran. Yes, four very strong characters with three of the most boring and names. Said, but this movie is a little less about the characters, and it's more about the, the event. Uh, situation, the events. That's why I like it, because um, I like that there's no, like, cuts between but, time and shit. It's just all continuously and, happening. And I'd say, I'd say Dawn of the Dead has more consistently strong characters, but it's for me, the here. best characters what? are in Day of the Dead. <sighs> Oh, of course, Dr. Logan and Captain Rhodes, I which was... are just so over the top, and, said, oh, and it's, oh, it's I... great. <laughs> nah, man, the best character is that racist ass fucking cop. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're, I'm sorry, unless Evan, when your race, your favorite George Romero character is racist cop. <laughs> <laughs> but I just like him because he's racist for absolutely no. It's like, who hurt this man? <laughs> who hurt this man? <laughs> What? What did? You, what happened? He kicks open the door and he's like, "I have black friends, so this is okay." And then he's teasing the thing. Oh, let's be honest. He has no black friends. You could sell even the the white yeah, cops. Yeah, no, but he's one of those people who constantly says he has black friends. <laughs> and the moment he's around black people, he blows their fucking head. Oh, I was like, I was like, Jesus fucking Christ, man! What the? Fuck? Welcome to our commentary track on Night of the Dawn of the Dead. <laughs> we're talking about every movie in the series but the one we're watching. He ripped at me! He held me and he ripped at my clothes! At the sound of temptation! Johnny! Johnny, help me! 
puts the lotion in the box. Is, is this a Panic at the Disco song? Oh, he ripped. Oh. And then Johnny came and he ran and he had, he fought this man. This man. I got so afraid I ran. I ran. Technically, Johnny. So you're ran. saying we should invade Iraq? <laughs> That was a topical joke from 20 years ago. You see, kid, little kids who watches. Oh. You see, kids, there's this thing called the Israeli conflict. <laughs> and here's another tip: never start a war with Israel. You know what? Just if if they're sand and people live on it, just leave them the fuck alone. For the it's for the best. Never start wars with sand people. <laughs> just. Don't make allies with a country named after a food. <laughs> oh, oh, I like. Are you talking it. about? You're talking about the uh, the island nation of Panera Bread, right? Yes. Oh, I was thinking of Sicilian flatbread. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting for that. It's just like a little tiny tap, and bitch, you got it. Ow. <laughs> Look at this movie, boys. <laughs> <laughs> Whenever we watch Dawn of the Dead, let's create a backstory for Racist Cop and why he <laughs> is the way he is. <laughs> so Racist Cop and his dad used to play baseball a lot. <laughs> no, you see, the thing is, he never knew his dad. Because... His dad was really black, and that's why he hates black people. <laughs> his wife, his dad was black, but his wife, his mom was, was Korean. So white. His mom was so white that he came full white anyway. Mm -hmm. The ratio worked out that way. Yep. <laughs> but where does the hatred of Mex? His sister was Mexican. It's yeah, a very. It's a, and his sister cheated on him. Let's with let's his... save this for the dawn of the day. Yes. Man. Well, I'm not gonna be able to talk about it because I'm gonna be laughing my fucking ass off. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like, God damn, where did this come from? Like I was kind of like zoning out, but then I was like, just come out here, show your face, you motherfucking N word and s <laughs> the S word. I was like, Jesus Christ, what the fuck? And then I watched it the second time when I rewinded it so I could watch it with my brother. And my stepmother oh, was man. making Romero, cookie. Romero really likes the S word. He's using it all the way in in uh, Land of the Dead. They still say Spick. Yeah. But anyways, back, enough Spicks. My, my stepmother, <laughs> speaking of Spicks, my stepmother was making cookies well, in the kitchen. Nothing good, nothing good ever comes after someone says, well, speaking of Spicks. <laughs> Honestly, Spick sounds more like like a treat that you would make. Like, um, like something some, with made out of like ginger. I remember back at Ben's... Ben's forest house, where I used to board up the windows, go into the kitchen and make me a nice hot tray of spicks. <laughs> and we, and we, and we left those spicks. He cooked them. He cooked them on the on the living room chair, <laughs> using Vaseline. And for some reason, he just really had to season it up with the curtain. <laughs> oh, Ben, he was such a confused man. <laughs> so this is something that's barely. Brought back a little bit in Dawn of the Dead, and then never any of Romero's other zombies, which is zombies are scared of fire. Yeah. They use it a little in Dawn of the Dead, and then they just drop it. Yeah. Which, I mean, it's a little hokey. I think it's better to be left out of the mythos, but... I, it makes sense if you're the stupidest thing in the world, and you have no idea... And you just want to eat things, and then you see this... Fire. He kicked that a little too too close to the porch. You're gonna catch your house on fire. <laughs> and fuck it, it's, the house is gonna get torn down. Closes anyway. the door. He's like, Barbara, I think I may have made a horror. How much does fire spread if you covered a chair with Vaseline? <laughs> Alright, got. How flammable is fire? <laughs> on, on, on a scale of 1 to 10, how flammable is fire? <laughs> <laughs> you, wanna know, you wanna know why he's working so fast? 
he, because he just realized how flammable wood is, and they realize they've got to get their movie shot before the house burns down. <laughs> we got to finish this fucking movie before the house burns down. That's why this, this movie, movie is was real shot over the 30 minutes. Tom Savini was just barely off camera, just throwing painted actors to get them ready for camera. And if you look out the window, you'll see them trying to contain the damn fire. <laughs> <laughs> it's like half of the credits for this film are the firefighters. <laughs> we would like to thank the Pittsburgh Fire Department for making this movie 30 minutes longer. We would like to thank and apologize to the Pittsburgh Fire Department. And when they were burning bodies in the end of the movie, they it was re they were really just burning the Pittsburgh firefighters who got was, killed. That was just what was left of the house. Yeah, and the extras that didn't get out in time. <laughs> the ex the crew that didn't get out because they they still had to film the movie while the, the house was on fire. Well, in real <laughs> they just removed the flames in post. <laughs> you can't really hear, but in the background they're telling him, "Stop boarding up. We need to get out of here." And George is like, "No, the movie must go on." <laughs> George is like, this is my break, damn it! And that's why as Bart long as they for as long as they remember to put the copyright disclaimer on the on the label for this movie, I'm gonna be set for life. And that's why Barbara's <laughs> freaking out is because the house is burning down, <laughs> and he and Ben just won't stop smacking her. It's like, oh, you think they traumatized the actor? <laughs> pulled an Alfred Hitchcock. Judith O'Deal is just like actually terrified. And when he's grabbing that gun, it's not for protection against the zombies. He's keeping them all hostage. It's like, now listen here. <laughs> this is my... No, Dwayne Jones is in on it. Yeah. Dwayne Jones is like, this is my big break, okay? <laughs> they said, I could tear this thing apart. I'm a black man and it's 1968 and I'm in a starring role. I am fucking keeping this. <laughs> okay. <laughs> You can I just hear the, the the set hands off camera like, no, 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 <laughs> no, <laughs> no, no wait, no. it's okay, it's okay, we'll stay in the house. And he keeps putting flammable, sh keeps burning so, shit so you off think, wood. You think, you think that him setting the, the chair on fire was improv? He's <laughs> like, now he's trying to cover up his mistake? Because really, Ben... We're, keep, we're creating this whole mythos now. This movie has not much of a story, so we're creating a backstory. That's what- that's a hobby of mine. I went to the beach one time, and we went to this ice cream shop every fucking day, and there were this- the Swedish brother and sister there, so we created a fucking backstory for them on how they were, like, immigrants and shit, and how, like, it, when the shop closes every day, they have, like, a fucking fight club with the dog from the store on the next thing, and it's just fucking crazy. That's a hobby of mine. Spencer, you gotta do this. Just take somebody in your daily life who's dull, and make up a racist backstory for it? No, just just make a, a fake persona. So, so the racism is optional. Ra racism is optional. Just like create a fictionalized version of it. I'll be I'll be right back, man. Okay. God, I'm alone. Uh, <laughs> or was Spencer ever here to begin with? See. Look, I don't know if you're here. You know. So this is the upstairs. part of the movie where Barbara has one of her many character changes. Here, See, first she was all over the top and annoyed with her brother, but now uh, right, her previous I'll thing was she was all moody and freaking out over things. But now, right now this is her third character phase right, to where she's all quiet and shit. Okay, I'm back. Oh, he's back. So I suppose I should talk about John Russo. No, I want to. I want to. I want to. Get my final racist cop bit in. God damn it! I was trying to get it in three times, but you did something. Interrupt. All right. So when I, that's what I think of your racist cop. Tell me more. Perfect. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> so after I rewinded the film, okay, and it got to the part where they were rating the projects, <laughs> and the cop was at the sniper position, and he drops the N-word and spick, and then my fucking stepmom's making cookies in the kitchen. And I just hear, oh my. <laughs> <laughs> oh my. Oh my, I haven't heard that word since college. I haven't. When I said it, um, anyway. You're not wrong. <laughs> You're not um, wrong. <laughs> 
so I should get I should get some John Russo backstory in before these new characters are introduced and we have more things to talk about. Yeah. So uh, John Russo was the uh, co-writer on this film. Uh, he's a real big part of the creation of this. Um, he he later went on in the eighties. Uh, uh, Return of the Living Dead series, which the first one was great, and the other ones were interesting. Um, but uh, John Russo in the uh, 90s lost his fucking mind in 1998 and released the 30-year anniversary of this film, where he cut out some footage and then added new stuff, uh, which, of course, um, the only returning pa- cast member as I mentioned before, was uh, Bill Heinzman, who uh, plays his zombie again, even though he's 30 years older. And it's just the weirdest and most terrible thing. It's so interesting how a little bit of added can make this movie so bad. He's, uh, he's, a, he's, he had forgotten how to direct it. That I was going to say that he was writing, of course, um, Return of the Living Dead, the first one, was a great movie. But um, this added footage just just completely ruined this movie. If you ever see a DVD copy of want to buy it, be sure it's not the 30-year anniversary. Oh, they've got, they've got 10 different copies of this movie at my film there is, store. They've there was got... at least 20 different releases. Oh yeah, oh yeah. We've got we've got an original. We got the VHS copy of it. We've got a. Uh, I couldn't find a Blu-ray of it, sadly, but they have them at Best Buy for some fucking reason. I've seen two Blu-rays of this. They two got, different. they've got uh, the 30th anniversary edition. They got a colorized version, and then I got just the regular ass black and white version because I like. And the... then of course there's the Mystery Science Theater. All right. <laughs> yeah. And, and now there's the Evan and Spencer version. Which don't ever pick up this one. I'm sorry. <laughs> you probably, if you're watching this and you didn't find this on the internet, I would like to know what backwoods shithole country you live in, where this is just what, as far as entertainment goes. Uh, I don't know if our country has invaded yours at any point, but if not, don't worry, we're on our way. Unless you don't have oil, but don't worry, we'll come up with something. So uh, we have. Uh... Harry and uh, Helen and Tom in the background there, new characters have come in, who we were talking about John Russo during. And is he, is he carrying a fucking sword? No, that's a machete. I, I was it's... like, <laughs> he's just got a medieval sword. He, he wandered off the set of a completely different movie. I was drowsy the first time I ever saw this movie. I was like, what is that, a boomerang? <laughs> he just comes in with a boomerang. He's like, all right, mate, we got a fucking... In our zombie movie, I say we go to the basement. <laughs> the base, the 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 conflict within these two characters is much better, I'd say, in the 1990s. Tom Savini directed remake of this movie. Tom, Sav- I don't know if you know this, Evan. The the first remake of this film from 1990 was directed by Tom Savini, the makeup artist. Really? For, uh, night, day, night, dawn, and day. Yeah, and. It's actually really good. I'd say it's the best re- Romero. Hmm. I, the Dawn remake is all right in my opinion. I still need to watch that before I return the DVD. I, uh, I've my opinions on the director Dawn yes. remake are pretty clear, but um, to me at least, <laughs> the, the 1990s remake is. Honestly, I think it fixes a lot about this movie. Barbara is not catatonic through the whole. Thing. Uh, the character of Harry here is a lot stronger. The problem, one of the things it makes worse is that Tom and Judy are even better in the, uh, in the 1990 remake. They just, they are even more the vehicles of their own destruction in that movie. <laughs> but, uh... You two can do whatever you like. I'm going back down to the cellar. I don't know why, but every time I see him, it looks like his tie gets even smaller. <laughs> it's like it's been to a freaking <laughs> time because yeah. <laughs> Have you? Did you ever watch Buffy the Vampire Slayer? The, no. Uh, TV show. Okay. No. I was gonna say he really reminds me of the second principal in that movie, and I can't remember the name of that actor, but he's been in lots of stuff. He was in New Space Nine. He was in. I suppose it's worth mentioning that he was the third House of the Dead movie. Huh. 
but uh, it looks like about eight or ten out there now. That's the only thing that works. They're a lot out back too. Well, I guess I mean we're watching a zombie movie. What would you in this do in this scenario? In this scenario, with zo with zombie hands coming out of the, the window. Well, if I was pointing my gun at the zombie, I'd shoot instead of just holding it there. Or I could lightly tap at their fingers, uh, the, at some clay fingers with a knife, and <laughs> if there were clay fingers sticking out of the door, I would definitely tap at them with a butter knife. I would probably be in the background screaming and ripping the wallpaper off. <laughs> you would just hear, it's like, what's that, somebody getting slaughtered in there? No, he this just really doesn't like this color. A fairly important moment here is the first time we get the, uh, Zombies don't die from a heart shot. Of course. And this is really where the uh, the mythos established, honestly. Every time he shoots him, his shirt gets unbuttoned a little more. <laughs> oh. <laughs> he gets a little sexier. <laughs> it's like... We accidentally brought the parody. <laughs> Where they keep hitting Squidward with the fucking door. It's like every time you shoot this man, he... Oh, yeah, what they're... would the Night of the Living Dead porn parody be? I don't fucking know. Looks like we're walk watching it. I never noticed there was a naked lady. I always just thought they had... The like... Night of the Reaming Dead. Oh. <laughs> what? Wait, what? Did you ask what would the... The porn, porn par parody would be called. Oh, easy. Night of the Giving Head. <laughs> great one and that's original too motherfuckers <laughs> and it's a it's in the planning stages right now but it's two years time it will come out and it will be directed by evan and i will be starring so don't anybody take this idea evan we need to talk we need to talk script all right we need a guy <laughs> we need racist cop <laughs> the racist cop is going to be a nine Head. And this is gonna be an interracial <laughs> porn movie. We need porn parody names for the characters. We need a, a name for Ben and Barbara. What are they gonna be called in Night of the Dead? Hmm. <laughs> she can't possibly. Mm. Bimbra? Mm. No, I think just the title itself is fine. Yeah. We need to bring porn parodies back. Especially porn parody titles. There are still porn parodies, but they're shit now. Fucking Wood Rocket is making all of them. They're shit. It's they're a not dying even art. putting any effort into it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> dying art. And it was art, goddammit. Foreskin Gump was art, goddammit. <laughs> I may not be a smart man. But at least I'm not stupid. I may not be a smart man, but I know what love is. <laughs> I walked in on Jenna and her body was eating her hand. Her huh? Lieutenant Dan stuck his leg up my ass. Let me ass. tell you, if you're interested in this, Foreskin Gump, best retard porn I've ever seen. <laughs> is it sad this is not the first time I've heard about coitus with hard people? We were on our way to... Fucking McDonald's it was it Taco Bell? I don't care. And then basically we were talking. One of the guys in the front seat was talking about how that um they've got this lady on Miss America now who has autism. And she he goes, you know, for a retard, she don't look that bad. And you know, man, I'd tap that retard ass. I'd tell her, I'm like, I'm like, hey, hey, I'm re I'm retarded in some places too. I'm retarded in some places too, mainly in my pants. I got erectile dysfunction. I call it a retarded cock. <laughs> I call it cockle doo doo ditis. Okay. I think. It, how many minutes has it been since we've actually talked about the fucking movie? <laughs> oh, what movie? <laughs> yeah, like. <laughs> what, you mean one of the most important movies in horror film history? <laughs> Probably or even film history itself. One of the uh, driving forces bet between the modern mythos of zombie uh, movie that uh, owes its a uh, like historical and fucking major historical. How many shots? Of 
Spencer, we're not talking about foreskin gump, goddammit. Oh god, you're right. I'm talking I was talking about a the most the most important movie in cinema cinematic history. Can we can we make fun of the fact that someone's always fucking smoking? Like they don't take the original cigarette out of their mouth, they just put a new one in right next to it. Oh yeah, so for those who actually give a fuck about the plot of this movie. Uh, basically, that guy is trying to take charge, and he believes that everybody should be in the basement, but Ben is object to the idea because if they're locked down in the basement and the zombies get in, there's no way out of there. But of course... Which is a very fucking logical say. Honestly, why not both? <laughs> like, why not... Why not both? Yes, and this this conflict is, as I said before, basically the entire plot of the remake. And it's basically the plot of this movie too. It's you see, just this conflict of should we be downstairs or upstairs? It's a movie. One of the most, the most important watershed movies in cinematic history. Be about whether or not you should be upstairs if you boil it down to its most basic element. And. <laughs> George Romero was very, he was very subtle with the symbolism. That's very true. pro stairs. Is that what you're saying? Oh no, I'm saying is just that the man, that the tiny tie just represents his <laughs> small represents, manhood, if you would. No, it represents his shrinking idea of, and how the establishment is no it isn't seeing the world for what it really is. They're seeing it for how small their tie is. Mm-hmm. Now him wanting to be downstairs in the bottom proves that you don't need to be on the higher planes of life. To Did you see that cut? No, I'm too busy to make Did you see bullshit. that jump cut but in the same shot? I don't remember that. I don't remember a lot of things. Like, I don't remember her name, his name. As a matter of fact, the only... That is Tom and Judy, my, fr my friend, and my I've, boy. I've seen this movie five times. She reminds me of Laurie Sh Strode from Halloween. It's not like George Romero always picks the most boring, boring names ad. for his characters. And whenever he does give somebody an interesting name, stupid character, like Cholo. <laughs> what, I'm supposed to care about you because you worked for a rich white guy? And hey, hey, Cholo got things done, goddammit. You ready to get the fucking movie done quick? <laughs> Nah, man, if he had, if he had destroyed the city with his badass super train truck earlier, he would have gotten the movie done. They had to wait for Big Daddy to do it. So anyway, Night of the Living Dead, 1968. <laughs> um, I swear his tie is getting smaller every time is, I see it. Now, this is an interesting bit of trivia. It is not Land of the Dead from 2005. I don't know if you knew that. Really? Because, I mean, I see that they're on land. Are you sure? That... <laughs> That's true. They they have a lot of similar... The land. He's confused, too. He's forgetting what movie he's in. I, honestly, there is... Did you know? There is actually more land in this movie than there is Land of the Dead. It's true. Land of the Dead has water in it. Shit, which one was Land... Of... Forgetting about Land of the Dead. Wait, <laughs> it's the stupid one with the city. Okay. <laughs> I fucking hated and that Big one. Daddy. <laughs> he was the only good thing. He really was. I I like um retard one eyed retard characters. I forgot. Charlie. Charlie. Yeah. The only reason I knew his name was Charlie, because I'm every time I'm watching a movie and I'm like, I okay, I don't want to. I should say mentally challenged. I'd tap that retarded ass. <laughs> I would tap that retarded ass. <laughs> Hey, it's okay, because I'm retarded in some places, too. <laughs> Are you also talking about your... Yeah. I'm not talking about my enormously large ring toe. Or, no, wait, that's my pointer toe, never mind. Her brother was killed. See, he's smoking again. <laughs> like, why are they always... <laughs> There's fire outside. There's He's smoking. like spawning cigarettes out of his fucking. Because it's the 60s and people could just do that. It was a common mutation. Wait a minute. 
Is it? Do you think maybe that that was kind of the that everyone's Why always fucking smoking is the house? joke for that guy? Like, does anybody got any cigarettes? <laughs> that was funny. Does anybody else here know how to spawn cigarette? Like, we need to stop and get some cigarettes before we get to the island. You better watch this and try to understand what's I mean, I guess on. I've never really gotten the point behind Bed Movie Night, but I guess I want it to be like a mix. Of mystery science theater yeah, and some else. About that. Well, I mean, I enjoy doing it. It's just that you know, most of the shit we watch is copyrighted. But I like putting shit on YouTube, so I'm thinking maybe edit it in a way that's similar to Best of the Worst. I don't know, because it feels lazy just watching a movie. I guess it's good to talk about it. But uh, Chili and Ricky really aren't the guys to talk about movies with. They're more of the guys to watch movies with. Yeah, okay, I'm back after listening to you talk about your series. You're an ath. <laughs> You're an ethel. <laughs> I love this professional, by the way, <laughs> that the camera's too high and still moving. <laughs> And then it looks like he's not on a set at all. It looks like they're in the same house they filmed the rest of the Put a, a phone in there. Wait, wait, what is that? The corner? Is that is that Ben? How the fuck is that Ben? Is that Ben in the corner? Ben, think, you're on TV. I think that's one of my favorite jokes from the Planket Reviews. It's just that it's just random, but it's like, wait, wait, hold on a second. Is that, that the script? Is that the script? How did that get there? Hard to believe that I'm. Uh, the watching. most important thing that you do, uh, general public, panic, panic the fuck, panic the fuck out. Uh, all, all we can say is that we can't believe the shit we're seeing, but uh, we believe that it's true. Uh, you're all fucked. If you're not dead, you will be soon. Uh, board up your houses. Shoot people who walk near you slowly, and if they don't walk near you sl sh slowly, uh, shoot them twice. Man, I thought news was useless today. <laughs> At least we can see the bullshit they're telling us. <laughs> now, th this this message has been brought to you by the uh, the Youngstown. Oh, the the fire uh, department, which is currently the outside. Central right fire now, department, which is uh, special thanks to the fire department for helping us film this film. <laughs> who are currently outside right as we speak? <laughs> <laughs> because uh, if, if you don't remember the continuity of this commentary, the house is still on fire. Uh, we're keeping that joke going. <laughs> Uh, we will continue to broadcast for as long as the electricity box is not fried. Won't last much longer, boys. All we can tell you right now is that you're fucked, once again. Uh, please make stupid decisions and uh, get two characters killed very quickly because honestly nothing has happened in this movie for very long. It's been uh, for 58 minutes. Uh, okay. This is also brought to you by the Indiana High School. Wait, hang on, is that a... Are they broadcasting safe places to go to? I don't remember what... I think I think that's what they're doing. I think they were talking about places to see shelter, too. And they're, like, well, near the... the apartment isn't safe at all. Those people are busy fixing the house. The house. I know, I'm like, who the fuck goes to the post office? I don't feel safe when There's, I go there to get stamps. There's uh, Romero's uh, cameo as newscaster. Yep. Boy, he, I was gonna say, he, most, he, he was not a handsome man. He just always looked like, um, he always looked, looks like a, a happy grandpa. I just can't believe they got Joseph Stalin to do a cameo. <laughs> and an interesting cameo. Everything is being done. Professor, you feel that there is a definite connection between the definite connection as far as Dr. Keller and myself. Doctor, please. I, I thought we decided that is not proof yet. But, uh, was it, was, did they ever really the do like, many long takes in the 60s? Because I guess this is the only long take I can think no, of in an older film. No, there's plenty of long takes in the 60s. And Hitchcock. Oh, well, before the 60s, I mean. That's before the Hitchcock. I, I can't think of specifically 60s, but I'm sure, yes. There 
Well, it doesn't have to be 60. Yeah, yeah so, but yeah. We are doing everything possible to solve now all the now all long scenes are ever done is for fights now. I was, if, now movies don't use long takes as a storytelling device. They use long takes as a gimmick to the, for the uh, director to show off that he's smart. Yes. You have at least one scene to talk about. It's like, yeah, that long take was so great and how it didn't end. <laughs> I was a really big fan of how uh hit the red button on the camera. We heard the first really long time. We knew the old house was here and we came in and found the lady upstairs dead. Then these one of the crew member wandering around in the background. Across the door and it is pretty strong. How can we possibly get away from here? How can we possibly get out of here? The fucking house. The house is on fire, and nobody told the black guy to stop the county boarding fire shit. Hall. By the way, the county fire hall is it's this on. house. It is. The, it is now the fire hall. Actually, fire. actually, no. It's the hall that's currently on fire in the other room. <laughs> it is just one hallway that has been on fire. It is slowly making its way towards the living. This is uh, brought to you by the. Uh, Newly established county fire hall from 20 minutes ago, <laughs> when the fire spread into the house, obviously. Fire so that's why fire. he wants to go in the basement. The fire won't get us down there. No, they're doing their There's stone of... walls down here. We'll be safe, damn it, Helen. Foxburg. Foxburg. Oh, is this hall also on fire? <laughs> Or has the fire? It's oh, the, not the fire hall. Oh, the yet. the Tom Brady Recreation once Center. Once the once the county fire hall, the Foxford Hall will be the new fire. Ah, I see. Did she ask for me? She had to do anything. I don't understand, baby. She wasn't instructed to rub the child, by the way. <laughs> she wasn't instructed to rub her while rubbing the child. <laughs> I really like the way you rub. <laughs> Giving heads. Judy, just... I love the way you lick my ears for some reason. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Not if giving head is just a softcore porn about people chain smoking while rubbing each other, and for some reason there's a racist guy involved. No, listen. Neither the living head is giving head. You get bitten and you become. S you get bitten, but the way they bite you is they suck your cock, eat you out, obviously. Women you bite you in your woo woo, and then you become so horny. You you you're on an orgasm for the rest of your existence, and you have to give head to satisfy this thirst. Neither the living head. It's happening. Giving head, motherfucker. That's two. That's two runs. Night is a, oh, giving head. I'm sorry. Yeah, night of giving head. I'm three and a half, Captain Morgan. I'm like 21 hours without sleep. I think we're even. My eyes haven't been open in two minutes, but I can just visualize what's happening. Everything's on fire, and they don't want to be there. I, I look. I'm right. <laughs> Does he realize he's just making the house more flammable? <laughs> Every time. I have found some flammable liquid in the cellar. Great. Just pour it on the door again. Pour it on the cloth furniture. And, like, all right. Well, what can we do? More wood on the house. Just take all more the wood, God damn it. If you get the wood, listen to me. I've thought this through. If you get the wood out of the middle of the house and put it on the walls of the house, there will be less wood in the middle of the house. So the middle will be less flammable, you see. So we'll be safe in the middle of the house, while the outside of the house is fire. That'll keep the zombies out. He's nodding his head like he agrees <laughs> with his <point. laughs> I thought this through, you see. You see, the thing is, zombies don't like fire. So this as long as we have a wall of fire between us and the zombies... This isn't a commentary to track. Out. This is a fucking dub. <laughs> we gotta make sure that... This is just in news broadcast. You gotta set your house on Don't fire. Don't run with scissors. In just a house make sure. Just make sure the inside of your house doesn't have wood. Put all the wood on your walls. And for the love of God, no fuzzy animals on the wall. No fuzzy animals, goddamn. That's a bad omen. 
No. If there is a fuzzy animal on shot with you right now, you will be killed by zombies, goddamn. <laughs> Whatever you do, do not have a jar of moonshine at any times. Oh, god damn it. God damn it, you're doing it right now, aren't you? Things were said symbolically Wait. mean you're gonna die. Wait, what is that? Where's that over in the Is that a fuzzy animal? Fuck. <laughs> is that a goddamn boar's head on your wall? What did I just tell you? Put that on your. Put that on the outside wall. Instead it's flammable. Of, instead of boar's head, night of giving dead, it's a whore's head. I'm just rhyming at this point. The more we rhyme, the better our porno gets. Uh, yeah. Just like that episode oh, of Black me, Dynamite. Ben doesn't know anything about that stuff. <clears throat> Just like that episode of Black Dynamite where the new porn was they have a character who more and, more of those things. and throughout the entire series everything he says is in rhyme form. Okay. Is this an episode of Black Dynamite? Yeah, I mean, yeah, Black Dynamite right there. Remember how difficult it was. Wayne Jones is Black Dynamite. That was a good show. It's fucking great, man. It's not like that's pretty good animation too. Through. We've got to do something and fast. Comedy Central, man. The, you're an uh, you're an ass. What? It's Adult Swim. Well, D Adult Swim is owned by Comedy. C it's part of Comedy Central. It Why do they? You know, They're I don't the same fucking company. You know what? Fuck it. I don't care anymore. My life is a lie. I don't give a fuck. Wait, did I say Comedy Central is- Yes, you said Comedy Central owned Adult Swim. Okay, I meant to say Cartoon Network, but I said Comedy Central because they both start with a C. Okay. <laughs> We just found out you're retarded in another place. Is anyway, Night place? of the Living Dead, 19... I thought you... Um, oh. Land... Watershed landmark movie. Very important to the history of film. <laughs> um, people sit around and they discuss what they're going to do next as... It's about, it's about whether or not you should be upstairs or downstairs. And I don't... I didn't really get into this. So I didn't mention this when I... Uh, kids coming to see this movie and it being a whole kerfuffle. Because movies weren't rated it. But to us right now, this movie is very good. Very but bland. this was really a, f a fucking shock to the time it came out. The idea, this is a very angry movie. The idea of... People were just shocked at seeing a black person on screen, to be honest. It was a different time. Well, that and living dead eating people. Also, well, that, take, that takes the back shock. seat, though, to the real <laughs> shocker. <laughs> But this was perhaps one of, I don't want to say it's the first, because I don't know everything about it. It's the first that I can think of, a movie that's um, that's a gore movie. And, of course, the gore is tame to what we see today. But this is, this is a movie that sold itself on how shocking it was and how fucked up the things you see are. There's, of course, the sequence that we haven't gotten to zombies in the field just eating shit and it's it's uh it's this this is uh one of the the things that really pushed out the rating system that came all later after this film was released um but uh yeah this was this was like a a shocking splatter film in the time it came out basically the first splatter film it's not technically has to be extreme, but compared to what you had at the time, it was a splatter film. So this was uh, this was a real shakeup to that uh, 19 late 1960s suburban life, going out to the drive-in theaters. And yeah, I'm pretty sure this would have uh, spooked me as a kid. Somewhat. And of course, um, I don't know for sure, but I'm gonna say this is probably. Savini's first make, uh, first first job doing makeup, uh, and I think they look better than the movies in Dawn of the Dead. Of course, being black and white really helps in that. Yeah, it gives it gives them more of a ghoulish look. Yeah, they're they're and they're called ghouls in this a little. I, I I think we've already missed it. 
the characters call this call the zombies flesh eaters. They never say the word zombie. They do call them flesh eaters at once, which is a, a reference to the original title, which was first Night of the Flesh Eaters. Back, back! I say, I have fire. I have the high ground. <laughs> it's over, Anakin. I have the high ground. <sighs> I'll be one. That, that actor did not have a fire suit, by the way. <laughs> oh no, these are the people telling them they need to get the people out of the house before it burns down. <laughs> no, this is my big scene. I'm taking this show on the road. You stay back. You're not gonna stop me from the one movie I'm ever gonna get. We're taking this show on the road. That's the dirt that's road. Obviously. Well, obviously this uh this wasn't the film Dwayne Jones was in. It's the most notable person. He was in, he was also in Vampires. But uh, no one no one talks about vampires. <laughs> No. <laughs> Vampires somehow got. Vampires sucks. <laughs> yes. Oh, now that's something nobody talks about. <laughs> no, Jacob's the best. The, the Chihuahua thing that somehow the Fred movie got away with ripping off. <laughs> when you rip off, vampire sucks. You know you. Vampires you're... suck. You know you're you're at the fucking bottom. <laughs> Now, of course, uh, Tom is not the smartest character in this film, but in the fucking 1990s, re he kills himself and his girlfriend by fucking shooting the tank with the gas because the lock he didn't have the keys to the lock, and then it explodes. Makes more you sense. You just want the Idiot of the Day award. Idiot of the Night. <laughs> yes, obviously. Idiot of the Night. Dead. At night. At night. The night. That's what this movie should have been. <laughs> that's gonna be the name of our movie, Night of the Living Dead. At night. <clears throat> uh, our serious zombie movie. That after... Oh, I thought we were going for schlock. Oh, uh, of course. Because, because I was thinking another thing we should have is that one of the characters fights with a boomerang for some stupid. Right, right. The the titular boomerang which was. In this movie, sleepy. <laughs> this is just a great sequence the way they cut this. Obviously, cutting between angles like this was very difficult. Uh, this was done on a, I believe the budget was $140,000, which is more than which uh, oh, no, I obviously it... would be would be more money today, but still not very much money no i thought it was fifty-five thousand, and they made 30 million off of it they uh i believe the budget was 14 114,000. you can maybe yeah let's just here. use this magical but... device called a google and yes but the profit was 30 million dollars interestingly enough the profit of day of the dead was also almost exactly 30 million. But, but of course that they... was in 1980s money and they had learned their lesson by then Yes, the, and he actually copyrighted <laughs> So, he actually got Oh my god, I just but, Another conflict besides, um, you know, going upstairs and downstairs. Outside or inside? Oh, yeah. You know what? I think all the characters agree outside is worse. Except, of course, for Tom, who is stupid. <laughs> <laughs> he says they should all be outside. <laughs> I don't know. I think truck is the... <laughs> Truck seemed like a safer option. Truck was a trustworthy character, but he's dead now. Uh, ben is very mad. Well, now they're starting Truck. a new argument. Conscious or unconscious? <laughs> <laughs> I'm willing to compromise on con Admit your fucking asshole, Harry. <laughs> You're an asshole, Harry. I would have, if I was on okay. the set that day, this I would have asked part. Romero, I would be like, why the fuck are they naked? I don't know. This is the part where the movie gets, well, the Romero's answer to most questions where you're like, why is that in the movie? It makes no sense. Because it's His answer to all of it is, yeah, because I could. 
because I could do it, and I thought it would be a thing I would like to put in the movie. That's the attitude he had as a filmmaker, which is why I totally respect him. Anyway, this scene where the zombie grabbing chunks of flesh out of the car is really the part. Kids, parents got very upset when they took their kids to this film. When they saw living corpses uh, fighting over a woman's intestines. <laughs> and of course, what they're actually eating right now is ham covered in barbecue sauce. Uh, uh, not barbecue sauce, uh, chocolate. I would have gone with barbecue sauce. <laughs> and now that, that's just a ham they found. <laughs> <laughs> Because they could, Spencer. Because they could. Because they could. One of the zombies is actually... <clears throat> He's just realizing he has no one left to hold hostage. <laughs> He's losing hostages. Oh my god, it talks. Oh, only ten more minutes? Well, fuck! What were you gonna say? I said, oh my god, it talks. <laughs> oh my god! It talks. The, the, the second protagonist of this movie has lines. <laughs> no, that racist cop has had more of an impact on this movie so far than she has, and he's not even here. <laughs> And he's not going to be filmed for ten years. He's trying to get to a motel before dark. You said those things turned you I'm car. sorry, I have to. You think we can get back on his wheels and drive? Where is it? Okay. Please entertain people. I'll do my best. It's at least a mile. Johnny has the keys. You're gonna carry that child a mile? Oh yeah, the, basically there's a child in the basement that is sick, you know? Of course it was a big twist, you know, back then, you know. Whole sick and die become a zombie thing. But you know, that was new then, but nowadays it's like, eh, see it coming. Happens 20 times every episode of The Walking Dead. Well, one of us could try to get to the car. You're gonna turn it over by yourself. I just realized that when I stepped out, I said, please entertain people, as if there's, like, more than one person that will watch this. <laughs> Wasn't that funny how I said that? I'm so close. Well, you should be more specific. Somebody else who will watch this besides me a week from now. <laughs> Man, I'll watch it again. <laughs> Honestly, I would. I'm gonna be like, holy shit, I drank that much. <laughs> Honestly, we could put this on a fucking DVD. We, we can lit let me reiterate this is public this movie domain. got fucked so hard that me and evan can put this thing we're recording right now on a dvd and sell it and sell it and there's nothing no one can say about it no one can do anything about it. There we go. Flesh eating. Oh my and god. Fed in the same I'm gonna I'm gonna make multiple DVDs of this. I'm gonna go to my video store and I'm gonna put them all as bonus features on the Night of the Living Dead. <laughs> You're gonna open up Night of the Living Dead DVD. Jump a second there. <laughs> bonus features on the show. <laughs> oh my god, if you actually did that, I'd be proud of you. <laughs> As you can see, all these rednecks with guns and one very confused man with walkie talkie. <laughs> Honestly, I'm gonna see if I could just bring them a copy of my D. I'll just print, I'll just put it in a case or some shit, and I'll see if I could sell it to them. And say, I made this. <laughs> like, I made this. So, this is original. <laughs> this is you, original. You don't, e you don't even have to pay me for this, just put it in there. So, Tell me if someone um, picks it up. This character here is a, uh, the, this actor here is a, uh, uh, right here talking on the camera, is a uh, local Pittsburgh television personality who is the father of the actress who played Sarah in David. Oh. Sarah's the, Sarah, that's the only woman in the movie, right? 
The only woman in Day of the Dead, yes. Okay, because I zoned the fuck out during a lot of that. <laughs> I'm like, okay, he's yelling some more. <laughs> Joe Pilato, yeah, Day of the Dead, a.k.a. Pilato. Just yelling. IMDB summary for Day of the Dead. Joe Pilato yells, and there are zombies. <laughs> Not enough racist cop. <laughs> Not enough racist cop. In parentheses. <laughs> We're just overhyping him to where when that scene does come up, and that might have to be a commentary track. <laughs> oh, we're totally doing work for Donna. Kidding? You know what? Fuck it. I'll just do that shit I do with bad movie nights to where I just cut the best parts of it so they can't say shit about copyright. Or you can just release it as a commentary track. I can do both. <coughs> I don't know. I just... I don't fucking know. Oh, oh god damn it! The fire got to the power lines! <laughs> Forgot all about that fire. <laughs> Are the cameras still rolling? Do the cameras have power? I don't know. This is... This is... Sick. This is this is actually a colored... This is actually a colored movie. It's just that there's so much fucking smoke in the air. <laughs> Because if he keeps us in here any longer, I, 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 have to, I have to go do that. Go check on our daughter. Also, is, is Barbara alive? She's looking at us. I, is she alive? <laughs> she's not in the. She wasn't in the last shot. And her. Arm, I think she's dead. And her arm hair no longer attracts me. Oh, what's he doing here? Let those people out. <laughs> Damn it, Ben! You're a madman! The zombies are actually trying to save the people. <laughs> Twist. They're all burn victims. Like, no! You must put a stop no, to this madman! don't let them end up like us! That's, that's why there's naked this people running around. the most filmy of Romero's films. The first one... Is the most... This is, this is the only one that I've ever heard... Studying in film school. But, oh. uh, it's like... This one is the one where the cinematography is the most professional. Dawn of the Dead is very sloppy because they're time restraints. Which, I think the sloppiness adds to it. Yeah. I don't know, I liked a lot of the shots in Survival of the Dead, but then again, that was just because the previous one was a fucking found footage movie. I think you're, yeah, I think, I think you, your perception was by the movie so well, just well, before. Well, not really, because I still... I was finding the characters somewhat interesting. I was like, ooh, this is cool two Irish rival families Oh, you mean the surprise halfway twin Yeah, I kind of zoned in out of that. I was too busy focusing on, like, wow, they're not teenagers, for the love of fucking God. And Roderick's here, too. This is uh, awesome. There is a teenager in survival dead. Yeah, Roderick. And, and yeah. iPhones are cooler than laptops, dude. <laughs> How about Roderick? I don't fucking know. Oh, oh god, I guess we're not going downstairs. <laughs> <laughs> he made the sacrifice, okay? There had to be one less hot- See all that smoke? The fire's making its way inside. Uh, 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 it's like, we're coming! We're, her, we're coming her, to save you! So like, oh, oh, stop! <laughs> we're coming oh, to save on, you! Zombies. Here is the second extremely shocking part of this movie, as shocking 60s, is a dying father being eaten by his father. <laughs> oh, spoiler alert. Oh, God, I'm so Wait, did sorry. You, did you say a dying father being eaten by his father? By his... No, I said daughter. Okay. I don't know. But, uh, but I'm so sorry. Spoiler alert. Oh, I already went I over on that. This a uh, 50 year old movie. Oh, I talked about that already. On how it would it was shocking to them then, but now you just get that like 20 times on The Walking Dead each episode. Cuz nowadays we're like, oh, I mean, back then There's they were that. like, oh, it's so sad that again? She, she's dying, but nowadays we're like, fucking kill that bitch before it happens. I'd actually forgotten that Bill Hyde's been actually returns in this part again. It's a little burned. Uh, the first four 
Romero zombie movies each have at least one famous movie in it. And then he kind of gets Bill Hines been in this one. Racist Cop is in the next one. Racist Cop was not a zombie. <laughs> oh, the famous we were... one in the next one was both the Buddha zombie and the Flyboy. <laughs> and then, of course, there was Bub, the best of them all. Yes, I like Bub. Uh, after that, we had Big Daddy, and then after that, he kind of gave up on taking the character. I guess the only, I guess the, the zombie, the twins. Yeah, I guess I guess horse rider zombie. And for some reason, she ate the fucking horse. I don't give a cap. Damn. I was, <laughs> she I was... just keep stabbing her. <laughs> you know what? It would be a great like five minutes of her stabbing her, <laughs> <laughs> and it like keep cutting back to the mother still not dead, <laughs> and, like, and that that same sound effect keeps playing. <laughs> <laughs> Like at first it's disturbing and it's I mean like, just think about it, Spencer. It <laughs> just think about it, she's still stabbing her right now. <laughs> Off camera. There's the symbolic gloves again. The the gloves are grabbing her now, just like how they grabbed Johnny when he was a child. This film is and then important. Ben's like, no, that's my hostage. <laughs> she's safe again. I actually forgot that she got mauled. Because I remember it, it, how it all in Oh, there he is. <laughs> He's just returning it's the It's so the fucking weird in the 30th anniversary cut where it's kind of... It shows Bill when he's being buried and he's 30 years older and he's such a big part of the actual movie. Good movie. Sliced into that movie. Like, so fucking stupid. Hey, that dirt nap therapy procedure really does wonders on the skin. <laughs> One of them's not a zombie, that's just a confused... It's like, oh my god, a house. <laughs> she's like, I, I, I suppose they're just trying to get the negro out. And she's helping the zombie. Oh, and that, oh yeah, that old, that old lady. Actually, no, she just has dementia and she thinks it's her fucking house. <laughs> She's like, like, uh, uh, oh my god, I'm forgetting his name. The guy from, uh, from the, uh, you know, the, the first, oh my god, the first Men in Black movie, the guy who's the, the leader of the Men in Black in that film, who became so drunk and confused that he thought a bank was his house. What is his name? Whatever. Forget oh. it. Uh. -oh. If I knew his name, I would have made. <laughs> He's like all these perfectly good hostages. Why did she stab herself with a shovel? And why? He's like, why did he eat his own arm? <laughs> I'm gonna shoot you again, white boy, and again and again. Taking away my big scene. Which was, it's a sink, it's a musical. I just wanted everyone to stay in this burning house, goddamn. Right about, I, like I, when Barbara got taken away, I was the, the actress. <laughs> 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 These zombies are the Pittsburgh Fire Department. <laughs> All Ben ever wanted to do was do his own live adaptation of Song of the South, but no. <laughs> Song of the South was already a live adapted. Public domain adventure. Shut the fuck up. The spirit. It's public domain adapt. Yeah, adapt. <laughs> Am I the only one that says adaptation? I say adaptation. Because my Jack was like, it's adaption. I'm like, no, that sounds like a superpower. It's not adaption. That sounds That's like a superpower. Stupid. That sounds like a superpower. Yeah. Adaptation is way better. Yeah, adaptation is the correct word. It's not better. It's just what the word is. Your brother is stupid. Uh. <laughs> that woman just stabbing the floor with the fucking with the railing spike. So here we're getting to the part of the film where even though this Ben's character was not uh, written the black actor in mind 
They uh, changed the ending. <laughs> they did not. I'm joking. They this ending obviously has another layer to it because he is, and I, I think it does make the movie better. It's a, it's a little extra layer, and I think even without that, this movie would still be um, not a commentary, but like an, an uh, encapsulation of the late '60s. Of course. Well, first let's, first let's first let's let's let the uh, ending happen first, and then. We could well, talk yeah, about I was it. just going to say, I don't know if you know this, but the 60s were a little intense. A lot of things happened. So, uh, that's a little context for this. Let's just say being white was a lot better than it was We now. don't want to spoil the 50-year-old the movie for for those of you who may not have uh, seen. Or for all the five-year-olds watching this. All five of the people in the world who don't know how this movie which is and, which is perfect because five people will watch yeah, this video and that them. might be the five people so one of the volunteers you're doing all the work you take thank you we should be wrapped up here about three or four more hours we'll probably get into willard then i guess you can go over there and meet the national guard nick you and the rest of these men want to come with me a couple of down home boys. Something that is. Uh, I think he does very good in his role as the chief of this whole operation. So going back to John Russo, actually, I just remembered thinking, seeing this uh, posse scene. John Russo also made a third series of sequels to this movie. I don't know if you know, there are three series of sequels to Night of the Living Dead. There's obviously Romero sequels. And then there's the Return of the Dead sequels, which are John Russo. And then John Russo made another sequel with his Children of the Dead movie, which is one of the worst fucking things. No more, Spencer. <laughs> I couldn't get through the fucking Romero ones, okay? We're not going to talk about Children of the Living Dead. Yeah. Ben's very familiar with that sound. <laughs> that sounds like white boys with guns. That sounds like the police. <laughs> That's what I said, white boys with guns. <laughs> He's like, they are coming. Somebody had a cook out here, Vince. Yeah, it sure looks like it, huh? You have no idea. So it's, it is it is interesting how the whole film, Ben was like, we're not going to the basement, that's stupid. And now he's in the basement. That's how he survived. Well, at least that's how he survived and now. <laughs> but, uh, I'm, not, I'm not exactly sure what the message to that is, but it's obviously. I guess it's irony. Of course, the theme of all of Romero's movies, except for Diary of all, all of Romero's zombie movies, except for Diary of the Dead, the theme, the underlying theme between all of them is mankind's inability to work to, with each other is its downfall. We just all gotta learn to work and get along with racist cop. Well, I think the theme is more that mankind can't work together, and that's why we're fucked. <laughs> Whatever. As long as... Because people like racist cop exist. <laughs> we need more and people. And Joe Pilato to... yelling. Oh yeah. Hang on. There we go. Yep, he dies. That is Good shot. the darkest part of this movie. Our pro. I'd say aside from the the scene where obviously the daughter kills her parents, that is the most famous part. The sequence here. Mm-hmm. This is. Oh, uh, another fun fact. Uh, I don't know if you know this, but um, on the way, well, the George Romero, because he, when he went to go deliver this movie, he drove there himself. But on yes, the way to, yeah. to deliver this movie was when Martin Luther King Jr. got assassinated. So then having this ending was just kind of... It's so coincidental. It's coincidental that it happened right after, well, that the film was released right after... Martin Luther King was shot, and it's coincidental that Ben was black in the first place, but it just worked out in a way that turned it into this social commentary. I don't think they shot him because he was black. I think they shot well, him because yeah, he no, from a distance. They, sh 
the way it was originally shot, the way that the, the movie was originally written, without any race in mind for Ben's character, obviously, is that these people just shoot him because they see something moving in the house, and they'll assume it's a zombie, and of course it's just a uh, bad luck downer ending, but with this extra, with the, obvious, with this added uh, bit of context, it becomes something a lot more than that. So here we have our credits, which is a list of names. Uh, I don't really. <laughs> I don't see. Good job, Randy Burr. <laughs> Hey, look, he's next to Bill. <laughs> <laughs> now kiss. Night of the Giving Head coming up soon. <laughs> oh my god. Bill comes Night back from the... the Night of the Giving Head is happening, everybody. There, of course, that is... Uh, the, the Pittsburgh Fire Department. That is the, the house now. Because they had to finish the movie. That is the house along with some of the crew. The end. The end. We never actually noticed before now. The the and the end are. Well, that was Night of the Living D -D Dead. Night of the Living D -D -D Dead. I hope uh, I hope somebody watched this, and I hope you weren't too terribly annoyed by our mostly off-topic commentary. I, everything was at least vaguely related to the film. I think. And if not, it was probably better than what was going on. Did you? No. You, you don't think this is a bad movie. No, I'm just saying, just like, yes, this is a very influential horror movie, but Foreskin Gump. Okay, <laughs> you're right. Foreskin Gump is a better If any of you uh, can find a copy of Foreskin Gump, uh, or if not, I can direct you to a couple of websites. Um, but uh, yes, uh, Foreskin Gump. Maybe the best movie ever made? Uh, it's it's up there. Maybe, honestly, maybe E3 The Extra Testicle is better. That's another great film. Hashtag bring porn parodies back. Mm. Hashtag Night of the, Night of the Giving Head. 